Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another course vlog. We're back out here at the JW Marriott Desert Springs and we're playing the Palm Course still. We're out here on the back nine. If you haven't caught the front nine, check out that link in the description below. Love for you to catch that if you haven't already. And uh, also if you're not a subscriber, please feel free to subscribe down below. Click that red button for me. Love to have you back here week after week for some more golf. Here we go on to number 10. Number 10 starts right next to the hub, next to the driving range, and parallels the driving range. It actually wraps all the way around the backside as it's a long par 5 here, and we're going to need to avoid the bunkers down the left and right off the tee. If you have enough and can get it over the corner, there is a little bit of a downslope just beyond where you see those carts on the screen and it's gonna fall dramatically in front of the green down where you're not gonna be able to see the level of the green if you're about 100 yards and in. You're gonna to be too low in front of it. A lot of these greens here on this course are elevated like this here on the 10th, and this here also has multiple tiers to it. It looks like we're facing a middle hole location. The driver was working for me today and that draw was really turning over, was able to get that one to fly right over the fairway bunkers and down here on the side of the fairway. A full six iron into the middle of this green and I thought I caught it all but I must have caught it just a little bit fat and left it here just short of the green just next to the bunker. Using my sand wedge here to try to get up and down for the birdie here on the par 5. Yes, sir. Oh, it's always nice when you're able to get those 6 to 8 footers to roll in, especially to start the back 9 here with a bird. One of the tougher par 4s we're going to see on the course today, uh, only sitting at 375 yards from the tips. A hole 11 is going to really test you off the tee as those bunkers are dotted all the way down the right and left hand side. And the left hand bunker there is a big kind of volcano style architecture feature in the fairway. Another elevated green and a severely pitched green as well. There's two big tiers on this. First things first here is with the two iron, I wanted to avoid all the bunkers long and ideally place it just next to the big bunker on the side of the fairway. But as I described, that volcano feature really gave me an awkward lie here in the fairway. I overcompensated and hit a terrible shot with my pitching wedge right in between the palm trees. I had to thread the needle, I couldn't aim at the stick, and I was lucky here to just really keep it on the green. We're going to be facing about 12 to 15 feet here for par. I really want to salvage this here and validate that birdie from the par 5 just previous. Hey, that's a... There we go, that's exactly what we want to see. Come on, let's get those 15 to 20 footers to roll in and that just keeps your day going. A long par three here, the longest one we're going to see. 217 yards to a middle flag. It's going to be playing 207 today to that front little tier. Another two tier green. Just barely overcooked this six iron and just tugged it a touch off the left hand side. And I had enough of the sticky ryegrass to deal with that I wanted to chip it through it and get it all the way to that smooth green. Ah, confident enough, I was going to take the wedge and just tap it on in for the par, and we can head on down to the next hole. The 13th here is going to be the toughest hole we're going to see on the back nine, and it's actually going to be playing as a par five. Now, the difficulty off the tee, those bunkers pinch the fairway as much as any here on the golf course. A severe dogleg to the right is going to reveal 
The difficulty into the green, that big lake on the right hand side can gobble up any kind of shot you have. And of course, this green is a little bit elevated again from the fairway, especially if you're down on the right hand side of the fairway. Very small green here to deal with on a par five, really gonna be testing your accuracy coming in here. Kept it trying to turn over the draw, but I left this one out a little bit. There's the push, and it's up here on the hills in between the trees. I had a look. I had to launch this four iron up and over the trees. Oh, I caught that perfectly clean. Absolutely perfectly clean. And was begging for it to go. It landed right here in the front bunker. A terrible bunker shot though. Absolutely terrible. If I left myself 30 feet above the hole, I didn't take any time over this putt and I didn't take any time over the next one either. Oh, that's not close enough to just try to tap it in. And that is a very, very ugly three putt bogey. In the past, let's just go on to the next hole. I guess it could be drivable at 350 yards somewhat for me, but I really wasn't feeling it as coming off that three putt bogey, I just wanted to get something down the fairway and give myself another look. A plateau fairway is gonna lead to a dip down 100 yards short, back up to an elevated green, another one surrounded by beautiful palm trees and a couple more bunkers to deal with. A layup here off the tee box as that there is only my 210 yard club, my five iron, I'm trying to lay it back to give myself a pitching wedge into the green and completely avoid the bunker off the tee box. I had a little less than I wanted into the green, so I took a little less club and didn't quite hit it all the way back there. A long 40, 50 foot putt here for birdie and I'm just trying to fish this one down so I can have an easy par. Now ideally I don't want to duplicate myself from the last hole and miss a little short putt here, but I did feel confident over this one so I walked up and tapped it in for the par so we can head on down to where the main entrance of the resort is and some of the most beautiful golf that we can see out here in Palm Springs. There's going to be water on every single hole from here on out. The 15th hole is a mid-size par 4. You can't go down the water on the right, and you've got to deal with the bunker on the left. Now, if you can see by the waterfalls on the right, we are climbing up towards this green. It's going to be another blind green up and over the crest of the bunker in the fairway. And you really got to be perfect with your approach shot here. Got to get your distance correct. Just gonna lash another two iron down there, hoping it stays short of the bunker. And I absolutely accomplished that goal and gave myself a nice uh, gap wedge distance here. But I took one more in the pitching wedge because I was on this uphill slope, expecting the ball to launch up into the air. Compensated for it pretty well when I was just here off the green. That one was another quick little three footer here. I marked it, lined it up, and tapped it in. Gotta keep this round on going and we're on to what I think might be the toughest hole here on the golf course. It's only the six handicap, but it's going to require two perfect golf shots out of you. First things first, split the bunkers down the fairway and where the cart is on the left hand side of the fairway there is a plateau if you go beyond that it's going to drop down the hill and risk going into the water off the tee coming into the green you're going to be distracted by the snowy mountains in the background and a big elevated green here surrounded by tons of bunkers two perfect golf shots well the first thing 
That's a four iron down the fairway. I really wanted to leave myself a good number here behind the bunkers on the top of the fairway. Now, 170 is about as much as my eight iron can go, and I took a very quick swing, which typically leads to a flare off to the right-hand side. Doesn't quite go as far as it needs to when in I leave it off there and uh, got to get another one up and down here from off the green. Left myself a makeable one though, but we didn't get that one to drop and gonna have to suffer the bogey. And we're on to the beautiful Island Green 17th hole here at the Palm Course. Oh my, that right there is an island of palm trees. You got a back left flag today playing down the hill. Now coming off that hole previously, I was a little steamy, took that night iron and flagged it to five feet. But I had a slippery one, slippery, slippery one here. I played it a cup out to the right, and look at that thing. Look at how far underneath the hole it ended up. Ah, it is what it is. It's just another par, and we're on to the closer. Another one with water. As I warned, this one comes right back into the heart of the hotel here. A long par four. You're going to be able to take a driver or three wood off the tee. You got to avoid the water and the bunkers off the tee. And it's going to take another solid golf shot here into the green as the green is fully protected on all sides. You're going to have the view of plenty of spectators all the way around you. Wow, this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous resort here at the JW. Now, my dad brought along a uh, an old one wood. Decided to give it a try. Man, oh man, that club just gives off a different kind of a sound, doesn't it? Oh boy, that thing was hit pure right down the middle of the fairway. But unfortunately, it only went about 250 yards. Left myself another full six iron into this green. A little bit chunky there with the six iron once again, and uh, gotta get up and down one more time to salvage a little bit of a score here. Bump this one through that sticky rye and up to a couple feet. Just close enough that we can tap it in with the wedge for the par to finish it out. Thank you everybody for watching. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Later.